Hello everybody and welcome to this short uh, tutorial on Reshade, which is a post-processing injector which you can use with pretty much any game that you're playing. Um, what it does is um, add, an, add effects and enhance graphics of the games uh, you want to use it with. And among the stuff it can actually do is various uh, types of anti-aliasing, including FXAA and SMAA. Uh, as you can also see here, screen space, ambient occlusion, depth of field effects, chromatic aberration, dynamic film grain, etc. etc. There's a huge uh, list of effects you can actually um, enable using Reshade. Um, so yeah, some of you might already have seen um, a similar tutorial by Phil Style of number 54 Squadron. Uh, he's been using well, he's sh he's been showing an older version of Reshade in his video. Um, now, I think for a couple of weeks now, there's been a new version out, Reshade 3.0, and it's very different from uh, the previous versions. Uh, the previous versions came with an external um, kind of like tool which you used to actually set up a profile and settings and then um, pretty much shovel the effects and the injector over into the game. This is now um, different. Um, pretty much what you do is you download an installer, then let it run, you pick the game you want to use Reshade with, uh, you choose the effects you want to have available in Reshade, and then all of the setting up and tweaking is actually done in-game, which has the benefit of um, enabling you to immediately see what um, an effect really does, what kind of change it has, whereas in the old version of course you had to go into the game, have a look uh, um, what your settings actually did, then go back out, um, apply changes and then go back in etc etc. So um, it was kind of tedious and sometimes with some of the more subtle effects it's not really clear what exactly changed. So now um, that all the tweaking is done in-game you have an immediate comparison. So what do you do to run Reshade? Well obviously you go to the Reshade homepage, link is here up here, or you can just google it, Reshade should be the first um, a uh, link on Google and you go to download and as of today's date which is the 4th of November uh, the latest version is 3.0.4 and you download that which is an installer file I've already done this and you run this I'm running it as an administrator because why not and I'm using Reshade with Cliffs of Dover and also with Battle of Stalingrad. So how do you go about running this, for example, with Cliffs? So you hit Select Game and then you pick the executable of the game, which in this case is in the Steam folder, Steam Apps, Common, Cliffs of Dover. And then you have it, Launcher XE. And then you have to ren uh, select the rendering API, which is uh, pretty much um, for most modern games, um, you just have to pick which DirectX version the game is using. And in case of um, Cliffs of Dover, this is Direct 3D 10. So we have to pick this. In case of Battle of Stalingrad, it would be uh, DirectX 9, because it's still running on 9. Um, so you have to be careful about that. There is an... I think there should be an update to DirectX 11. Um, at the end of this year or beginning of next year, but for now you have to pick Direct 3D 9 uh, when you want to run this with Battle of Stalingrad. Anyways, now it's asking me, do you wish to come download a collection of standard effects? Yeah, I want to. So it's downloading this and now you see we have a shit ton of different effects uh, here to choose from. Um, if you have no idea what these do and you just want to have a look at what everything is like, you can check all of these. Um, be 
want, however, um, if you have all of these selected, um, it's going to take long uh, for Reshade to load everything in, which is not much of an issue with uh, games or flight sims other than cliffs, but in cliffs it's a major pain in the ass because uh, basically um, the game itself and the GUI um, basically are two different layers which are seen as two different executables by Reshade. So whenever you go from your cockpit uh, to the menu or from the menu to the cockpit, um, Reshade is going to reload everything that you have in there and that's going to take a while depending on how many of these effects you have. With other games like Battle of Stalingrad where everything is um, kind of like in, in just one executable and in one layer, uh, you don't really have that issue. It's going, just going to load it once on startup and that's it. In Glyphs, however, this can be an issue and this can actually be a pain in the ass. Um, I don't want all of these. I am just interested in a couple of these, which is FXAA, SMAA, and Vibrance. Okay, so I've picked these. Installing to launch has succeeded. So that's that. You can close this down. And the next thing uh, we are going to do right inside the game itself. Right, so we're in a game now. And I've paused the game. This is just a quick mission. And how do you go about setting Reshade up? So by default, the key combination of bringing up the setup menu is Shift F2. So you should be seeing a sort of uh, window right here, Reshade. Isn't that a version by Crossire? And it just says click on con click on the continue button to continue the tutorial. So first thing is we're going to create a, um, a profile. So I'm going to give this a name which is Cliffs. Press enter and now we have a list here with the um, effects that we can use. I'm going to press OK here and right down here you can actually tweak them. And I'm going to just click finish because this is uh, bright red boxes are kind of annoying. So um, with these, these uh, checkboxes you can actually enable or disable effects. Um, what I use is um, in Cliffs is FXAA and Vibrance. FXAA is pretty much the same um, anti-aliasing technique already included in Cliffs of Dover, but the in-game anti-aliasing, um, while it's very neat looking and it produces very nice graphics, um, makes contact spotting very, very hard because uh, basically how FXAA works is it to a certain degree um, blurs the image and with the in-game AA this um, this blurring is to such an extent that it basically um, blocks out contacts at long distances so that's um, that's why I usually I don't use uh, the in-game anti-aliasing in, in any kind of flight sim that I play because I rather see contacts um, and I can live with um, some edgy graphics. Uh, but fortunately with Reshade um, you can have a very good compromise between image quality and contact spotting. So what I am using in terms of settings here is I set this to zero and usually uh, not quite ah, come on 250 so 0 0 0.25 and 0 and we can have a look at this switched on switched off uh, kind of have a look here at this cockpit strut here turning it on turning it off. Or here, you can clearly see 
I don't know if it's visible in the video in the end, but I can clearly see there's like these this uh, step in the graphics. When we enable this, it looks much smoother. Uh, however, what is also apparent is in the distance, uh, textures look a little bit more um, blurred, but these settings are a good compromise between um, image quality and um, the ability to actually spot contacts in the distance. Um, a similar technique for anti-aliasing is SMAA, um, which has the potential of giving you even better image um, quality. But one of the downsides that I've seen with SMAA is that it's um, it's very hard on in-game text. It, it really messes up text. It doesn't really like um, anti-aliasing text. So. I am kind of partial to FXA over SMA uh, at the moment and also what I want to have is vibrance. Uh, what this actually does is um, it makes um, how to say um, it makes colors stand out more. Uh, I can show you what this does. I've just enabled the effect going to increase it and as you can see the color contrast just dramatically increased. Now going back to pretty much zero. This is zero. This is pretty much without any color enhancement. And this is with the effect completely on. Of course this this is over the top. This looks cartoonish. But what I have settled for is a setting of 0 0.2. Um, which gives a notable uh, increase in color uh, contrast without making the game look too cartoonish. So effect is switched off. Let's switch it on. On. Off. On. And off. So yeah, these are my settings that I use. I said I'm using FXAE and Vibrance. I'm still kind of um, fiddling around with SMAA. I, I haven't come up with settings that I really like uh, with SMAA so far, but I'm going to give it this um, a go soon and see if I can actually get some uh, nice settings to go with this. So, as I said, on this home screen, you actually adjust the effects that you've enabled. Um, then on the settings tab, there's a lot of interesting stuff. For example, uh, you can change the key you use to bring up the overlay, which is basically this window here. Um, you can set a toggle key for the effects, which I'm going to use. I'm using scroll lock. Um, all of this pretty much is not important. You can actually also set up a, a screenshot key and a screenshot format. I'm using PNG. Um, other than that, there's not much, uh, not a lot of interesting stuff. Nothing that you actually should be fiddling around. You can also um, enable clock to show you real life time. As you can see, it's almost 1 a.m. right now. Um, and you can also enable F an FPS counter. Uh, but I usually um, have these disabled. And another important thing, something to keep in mind, is once you've done fiddling around with the settings and you're happy, um, this right here, usage mode. By default, when you start this the first time, this is in configuration mode, which means you can actually tweak all of this, all of these settings. And um, yeah, once you are done and you're happy with what you've set up, uh, it's recommended to set this into performance mode. Uh, what this does is um, it disables the configuration ability 
So once you are in performance mode, you cannot um, tweak your settings, but at the same time, performance mode gives you better performance, <laughs> as the name suggests. So you're done tweaking, set this to performance mode. If you want to get back to configuring your settings, switch this back on um, configuration mode, etc. Right. So, um, then here's a statistics page. I don't know. Um, I don't know myself uh, what all this information is about. Supposedly, it tells you um, about the performance drain that um, V-Shade has on your PC. And you can also see an FPS count right here. And last but not least, there's an about section as well. So yeah, that pretty much uh, concludes this short tutorial. Well, rather short. This has been going on for quite some minutes. So this is just a very quick rundown of Reshade and what it does. Um, I hope it, this was kind of useful. Um, the procedure is the same for pretty much every game. Uh, I've shown this for Cliffs of Dover because that's pretty much the main sim that I play. So yeah, I hope uh, you guys found this useful and I hope to see you guys in a future video of mine.